Hello everyone and I have a very beautiful Masi uh, interactive chess game from the history of chess from 1882 and in this chess game we have James Mason with the white pieces and his opponent is Max Weiss, the Austrian chess master uh, who is known as a pretty talented chess player but then uh, because of his business life he stopped playing chess. Uh, I couldn't find any decent picture of my Max Weiss uh, but I only found this very nice engraving. Uh, I already knew this about. I already knew about this engraving, but I I couldn't. I never could find the better quality of this picture. So this is actually a very good quality of this pretty nice engraving about the New York Chess Tournament uh, in the late 19th century. So we can see Mikhail Chigorin at the right playing with Max Weiss. The Austrian chess master that I mentioned and Max Weiss uh, we couldn't see his face so uh, we can't see his face in this engraving so this is why I'm not going to use his picture uh, in this engraving but uh, this is actually in my opinion both historically and aesthetically a very important and a beautiful engraving so you can feel the general uh, ambience and the environment around those years it is so different isn't it uh, their clothes their hats they look so classy and well dressed of course they all look like real gentlemen so these this is a photo from the late 19th century in a chess tournament in new york and okay uh, let's check out what happened in this chess game uh, this is a highly instructive chess game of James Mason, as I mentioned. So Mason starts the game with pushing to the pawn d4. We have d5 and bishop to f4. And Mason plays the London system again. Uh, back in the day, it was known as the Mason variation. And I'd like to share an interesting historical fact. Uh, they used to say, uh, back in the 19th century, the London system was not well understood. So they were mocking the London system with giving names in the chess community. They were saying things like, this is, instead of calling this the Mason variation, they were saying, uh, they were calling this opening the boring variation, because as you can see, white is little passive. And also, uh, this, this London system back in the day was also known as the lazy man's opening. Because I have to agree about the lazy man's opening part. Because anyone can play the London system. You don't have to memorize many complicated theories and variations. You can always play the London system almost against any opening. So this is the beauty of the London system. Uh, so again, back in the day, this was known as the boring variation instead of Mason variation. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? So, okay. But uh, I am not. I don't agree about. Uh, I don't agree about being a passive opening. Of course, uh, this is not a passive opening. Uh, white potentially can uh, unleash a very strong attack in the king side, despite the fact that the bishop is actually blocking the f pawn. So ideally, you want to push the f pawn and open the king side. But in long term, white can actually uh, unleash a very strong attack in the king side. So knight to f6, knight to c3, a6, e3, e6. So the most played move in this position is actually, by the way, a not knight to f6. Usually black plays this move and white pushes the e pawn. And actually white is pretty solid. A white has many options. We usually see the typical London triangle a pushing the c pawn to c3 and also developing the knight. And this London bishop is going to be a very important key piece. So you should never, if black, let's say, pushes the pawn, you should never exchange your bishop with the knight, with the undeveloped knight, if you play the London system. So knight to f6, knight to c3. Okay, let's check out the moves, because I talk too much. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so these are the opening moves, basically chasing the bishop and pushing the pawn by James Mason. He wants to open the game. And d4, so black has the space advantage in the center. And then f4, b5, knight to d2. So developing the bishop, these moves are quite uh, obvious. 
and pretty tempting moves, of course. And Mason played an important move. He played knight to e2, so he can lift the rook up and then swing the rook on h3, attacking the queen. And this is the idea. And actually, black is playing a passive move. This move actually has no purpose because black is targeting his d pawn, his own pawn. And then simply attacking the queen. And we see rook from f1 to rook to h3. So in this position, I think the main threat is queen to h5 and then checkmating the king. So we have g6 defending and not allowing queen to h5. Uh, Mason is developing his knight, knight to f3, and we have f6 asking a question and giving up the bishop. And e5, f5 by James Mason. The better move in this position was pushing the pawn, but that would be quite boring, of course. That's a boring move in the 19th century. Chess players like dynamic attacking chess games, and they usually liked open files. So we have rook to f7. Uh, again, this move would be a better move, but then you can see that there are some weaknesses at the light squares. And maybe black is threatening to push the pawn for the knight and the rook. So, okay, uh, this is also not amazing for black, but at least after rook to f7, Mason is opening the f file and he has the open position and getting in with the rook, rook to h6 and rook to g7. King to g7 would be a tempting move, but this move would lose immediately. Can you see what's wrong with this move? Then rook takes on g6, of course, and basically black is losing by force. And after knight to g6, this is both attacking the queen and threatening checkmate. And actually, there is no sensible defense because if rook to h7, then capturing the queen with check. So rook in, rook to g7, and knight to h4. So defending the voluble pawn. And first, Mason played a very important move. He played rook to c1. He is capturing the open file and attacking the bishop. And then he played queen to g4. And after bishop to c8, it is white to move. So, can you see the best move for white? If he haven't played rook to c1, he would not be able to do this amazing move. This is what Mason did. This is what he did. He picked the rook and he smashed the bishop. He is chopping the bishop with the rook. What a move. And black captured the rook. Rook takes on c8. Uh, getting rid of the bishop, but Mason believes that his two knight and the rook is good enough for attacking the king, and also, of course, he has the queen targeting the king. So, knight takes on g6. <coughs> so, in this position, the immediate threat is checking the king with the rook and then capturing the queen. So, we have rook check, but this check does nothing, and king to f7, escaping of course. And Mason played a very strong move. What would you do in this position? How should white play? Can you see the best move? Okay, so Mason played knight to f5, of course, forking the rook and the bishop, and the main threat is capturing the bishop with check, and that's actually all over. So forking the queen and the king if capturing the bishop, saving, but instead of capturing the rook, he played a better move, this is even stronger, lining the queen with the king, so king to e6 and only then capturing the bishop and then capturing the rook with check, both is check, uh, this move was also a check of course, uh, so capturing the rook, queen takes on g7 and white played the move and black resigned. The move is queen to f5 and black resigned. Because of this continuation, there is only two possible scenario. One is king up and then rook to h7. And that's winning the queen. And if a king goes to the side, then basically black is getting checkmated. If not capturing the rook, if capturing the rook, that's losing the queen. If not getting checkmated. There is no sensible defense, so what do you think about this chess game? A pretty instructive chess game by James Mason. Uh, he played the London system. Actually, James Mason was the first player 
uh, who introduced the London system, who played the London system first. So interesting. So this is why the London system is also known as the Mason variation. And chess players today still uses the London system because uh, even at the highest level. So recently, uh, Dinkleren used the London system against Ian Napomniachi, and he became successful by defeating his opponent. So even at the highest level in modern chess today, uh, we can see the London system at the highest uh, at the highest rated chess tournament. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye bye.